Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Carissa. And I'm Lindbergh. <laughs> and I totally forgot to warn you guys about that. <laughs> okay. It's like, they've done that before. We'll be okay. Uh, this is our podcast about anything and everything off-road. As always, we're socially distanced. It's the only way we can create the show. I'm in the Midwest, which feels like the Arctic Circle. Ross is in the Northeast, but not joining us tonight due to illness. And then Chris and Lindbergh are on the West Coast. It's just where I generally go for people. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice over you guys actually. You come over. You guys vary. Like sometimes you're in California, sometimes you're down in Mexico or thinking about Mexico, or then you're in the desert. Like it's just, you're out that way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. We like to just like explore the West and yeah, go to Texas here and there and just wherever, wherever the wind blows. Yeah. That's I mean, right. But Texas think, for the holidays, right? Yeah, yeah. We're in Texas for holidays. Yeah. Best, best barbecue yeah. in country. And that's fighting words. <laughs> Absolutely. It is. We can. <laughs> I just, my buddies just sent me the, because the chat GPTs are, it's like make an image of whatever, like have you uh -huh. seen that, make it more, whatever. Yep. So they did make it a Kansas City in, and then it was like, as soon as they said, make it more Kansas City in, it was absolutely barbecue was in the image. <laughs> 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 the first one was just a bearded guy with a latte and I felt very seen. So uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, it is the Arctic Circle here as it is for most of the US. I have been absolutely freezing my ass off. I'm um, sorry. Yeah, homie. It, I would say what's it, what is sustaining me is all of like the people that we've talked to from like Arizona West uh -huh. of like SoCal and like uh, I think it was like Nina Barlow the other day posted an image of like them in Sedona and it was just gorgeous red rocks and I was like, where's the snow? Like where's they did get a little snow though. Yeah, they get a little, a little, little like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like pretty snow for you guys. Well, and like to be honest, we've only really had like one decent snowstorm, and then everything else has been like a half inch to an inch, like uh -huh. in like fairly quick succession. But like none of it's melty. Like it is, the temps have not even come close. Normally, like because my driveway faces north, and so like I have to scrape it immediately to get everything off, so it doesn't sit like that for another six weeks. It doesn't matter right now. It yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We got another inch a day, and my 12 year old and I went out in right, right. two degree weather <laughs> to like scrape it. And the weird part is, is like how we're adjusting because it's been so cold so long now that like negative teens doesn't feel that bad. Mm -hmm. It's wild how the which body is acts like that. Yeah, which yeah. for the Miami Dolphins, they didn't have enough time to adapt when they came in the other night. <laughs> like they were, they looked cold yeah yeah <laughs> but you'd be like you guys joining us like the thin blood you guys aren't yeah. gonna i mean yeah. we a couple years ago we did norway and we came from california straight to norway mm -hmm. and it was in the winter and i think it took like Maybe. we were there for a week yeah like four days we four were, days like, and we were acclimated yeah. yeah i think we, were, we finally got into like just one layer of long sleeve towards the end of it because it was like the low was like a 25 or something like yeah. that yeah but, yeah it takes a little while to get used to <laughs> yeah dude my first year i lived in florida i ran around in shorts on a t-shirt the entire year because i still had the thick blood like it was yeah. Yeah. that second year all of a sudden it was like oh here's my winter coat like here all those <laughs> things have to why am i wearing a coat in 40 degree weather like that's it's almost like what that's 60 degrees warmer than it was right yet. right, right. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm like, I'm regular it's like 44 out we're definitely in coats yeah. when we go outside and yeah. then the ug was invented in australia where they don't see anything Right? Yeah. I mean, well, plenty of sheep to make boots with, but. <laughs> but it's like a surfer thing originally to get their feet. Were they up. really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that either. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I still make fun of everybody who was wearing Uggs. <laughs> we are avid Uggers, actually. <laughs> I'm not judging. I'm not judging. <laughs> so it, it's like Uggs are like the Birkenstocks and like the Crocs, right? They're like incredibly ugly, but they're so yeah. comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. See, and that's every time I've tried to wear Birkenstocks, my feet are weird. Like I have a flat foot and I'm like, this uh -huh. is the most uncomfortable thing I've ever worn in my entire life. Maybe <laughs> I need to try some Uggs. <laughs> try some Uggs. And, yeah. Flat feet. yeah, Uggs yeah. are really good for flat feet. Especially okay. right now for you guys, it's perfect. Right. I have some, uh, God, I don't even know what brand they are. I, I think it's like a Hawaiian, maybe like Olakai or something like that. Like <laughs> slippers uh -huh. that I wear all the time in the house like it's yeah, just yeah. constant like i put my socks on i put those on and that's what i yeah, walk yeah. around the house with. yeah so anyway <laughs> yeah that's literally my only updates are all of my vehicles are still functioning uh -huh. which is good which i yep. uh i have a friend who 
they didn't cancel their Boy Scout camp out over the weekend. Like mm-hmm. they were camping in these extreme temperatures that we're wow. uh, enjoying here. And he said he had to do the old Russian car trick of wrapping his engine bay with a tarp and putting his little buddy heater below no the engine way. block okay. to warm it up enough to get the engine to fire. Like his battery had energy, uh-huh. his uh-huh. his starter and the rest of the engine just did not want to go. Was it a gas um, or the diesel? It was gas. It was a gas wow. truck. It was, a, it was a, yeah. a Land Rover Discovery. Um, wow. Yeah. So shout out to Ron to figuring out a way to get his car started. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the heater's genius. My parents have that with their boat right now. They like have a heater going to it. And in yeah. Texas, it's in like mm-hmm. the teens now. Yeah. Yeah. I saw, I saw like all my Texas friends were like, all right, let's get the taps dripping again. And then yeah. it was like how how hard you have to work to get at the exact moment to get just the perfect drip without it just right. like running con like right, everyone's right. looking for that little spot. <laughs> and then you set it and you're like, shit, I still have to brush my teeth, so I'm gonna be doing right. that again. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> we're just it's living spoiled land over. We we're, we're yeah. getting sixty eight tomorrow, by the way. <laughs> well, that was the the fun part of the the Dolphins Chiefs game the other night because my my in laws are in Southern Florida and so yeah, yeah. I was like it's literally seventy degrees different temperature between there and here right now yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that's crazy that's wild yeah crazy Insane. yeah yeah so yeah. the good news is it won't last we are yeah. adding daylight we're getting warmer we yeah, just have yeah, to get yeah. through we'll be, we'll be outside yeah. more too even for us we're going to be outside more yeah. yes God yes. Yeah. So I did shovel the driveway today and it actually was nice to get out. Like Ross was giving me a hard time. He's like, I wouldn't go anywhere. And I was like, well, yeah. if you live in a house with four kids long enough, I mean, you, you don't want to get out of I could, I could see that. Yeah. Uh, sun's yeah. important. Yeah. Yeah. Even Put a coat and gloves on. <laughs> Put a coat and gloves on. And a hat. And a hat. So. Yeah. So it has been a hot minute since we've talked with you guys. Yeah. I feel like you guys have had a lot of exciting things that have happened. <laughs> yeah. Some pretty cool things for sure. Yeah. Um, let's see. Where do you um, want to start? <laughs> uh, I guess we could talk about the show. Let's talk about the show. Yeah. Definitely. Let's skip all the way down. So let's skip all the way down. So it's not gone dirt and right. It's not gone dirt and cooking. It's just no, no, just gone cooking. Gone so cooking. The show's called gone cooking. <laughs> and um, we were filming all last year. Um, it's five episodes, and we've been filming for that all last year. And we are deep in the editing process now, and we're going to launch in hopefully spring. Hopefully spring. Okay. Hopefully spring. Uh, It has to be spring no matter what. But like, I'm just saying like, yeah. I was like, we're mostly through winter. So like. (laughs) So like March, (laughs) late March, I think we're we're not dead set on a release date yet, but um, we're really excited about it. It's going to be done and we're really excited about it and yeah, ready to get it out there. I'm. I'm excited just because I feel like this is a part of like the off-roading world that like kind of gets talked about, but not uh-huh. really mm-hmm. a lot. And I feel like it's one of the most important parts of like, how are you sustaining yourself right, right. when you're traveling or when you're on right. these trips? Like, right. and everybody has a different take on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. and I feel like your guy's take is definitely different than what I would ever think about. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the good thing I'm with like, traveling is it's always like interchangeable, right? Like we definitely have our days where it's like PB and J. Sometimes it's just like meat and crackers and cheese, but then other times we're like really craving mm-hmm. food that we're used to being surrounded by. Yeah, so yeah. right. Lumber will just like throw together like whatever food that we're craving, Korean, yeah, yeah. Mexican, like yeah. whatever it may be. I could I, I always tell Carissa this. I could confidently say my number one skill in life is to be able to throw anything together as long as I have ingredients in front of me, <laughs> right? And But that, that, that comes from necessity, right? Like I right. came from not a lot. And after I became an adult, I get, I, I became even more not a lot and just being by <laughs> yourself and things like that. And you kind of put like, oh, I have crackers and I have cheese and what yeah. can I do with it, right? And th- that just comes out of necessity. And I think that's a huge skill set that I've grown that I've appreciated up with myself because I could literally throw anything together. But Carissa, she always say like, she could see the fridge. But she doesn't see anything in it. Mm-hmm. Like, how girl, you, you and I are the same person. Like, I, <laughs> I, it's it's a comment I make to my wife all the time. I was like, I can open the pantry and I can stare at everything in there, and I will be like, we have food. I can yeah. see it. Yeah. No, and she'll be like, take this, this, and this. Uh huh. Cook that, and then like that's a me- like, and I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> 
So, so I'm excited the, the, for resources. <laughs> <laughs> the concept of the the show is really interesting too because it's not really showcasing like new techniques of how to cook outdoors or while you're traveling. It's kind of bridging the gap between home cooking and then outdoor cooking. Uh, because one of the major questions that we always get is how do you cook or what do you cook whenever you go out, right? And right. for us, one of the main things that we miss whenever we, we are traveling is home food, right? And so a lot of times I'm creating home food and I just change it just a little bit to okay. make it easier at a camp. And so a lot of the show, the, the show is like, takes place in two parts, right? So one part, it takes place in a guest home and they teach us one whole, like one dish, right? And they talk right. about their dish a little bit and they, we never, I've, I've never had it before and things like that. And then we eventually go to camp and I recreate that dish at camp, kind of like okay. to see the twist. Yeah. So in this, in the image I pulled up here, this is basically exactly what you're talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's a Vietnamese dish. Uh, it's very regional too. So like, yeah, that one is specifically is in the central of Vietnam okay. and they normally a lot of people are, a lot of Vietnamese people are, a lot of Vietnamese people in the States are from the South. Right. So if they saw Shocking. that, they would... <laughs> Right? But because that's a central dish a lot of people okay. will comment they always come and say oh there's no tomatoes in it right but i'm like no 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 it's, it's a central dish it's not a southern dish there's no tomatoes in it because of that but that's a whole different thing yeah dude that's that's hilarious <laughs> that's what that that's exactly what we we're talking about a little bit ago with barbecue like texas right. and kansas city barbecue is just right. fractionally different fractionally different yeah. right. but at the same time like everybody's making brisket like we know it's going to have some brisket unless you're like right. go more east they don't do that so much but Texas yeah, and Kansas yeah. City is definitely going to have some version of brisket involved. Yeah, totally. Uh, it's kind of like the, the prevalent Italian food in the United States is from one region of Italy, <laughs> right? The red sauce stuff. Right. I'm trying to Which think is, of where, is that where more southern or more northern? I think it's northern. I'm not 100%. Is it? I don't know. My, my Italian wife is probably going to beat the shit out of me later when she realizes <laughs> that I messed that up. <laughs> so how often do you send a gravy? Not that often. There's not a lot of gravy. Oh. Uh, uh... There's a lot of sauces, but they're normally red sauces and meat sauces. And like she, she did that tonight from scratch. So she, okay. she that wins. I'm, I'm not very good at it. So <laughs> <laughs> I hang out a lot. Uh -huh. oh, no. I clean, to be honest, we years ago, we uh, maintained that like she would cook it uh -huh. and then I would clean it. Okay. Because I didn't have the skill. Like I'm like, I, I don't know what I'm doing. So like, I right, definitely know right. how to do dishes though. Like that's not yeah, that hard. Yeah, so. totally. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm on dish duty. Yeah, she's on dish duty. I'm, See, I'm I always, uh, I have, we haven't made Sunday gravy when we camp yet, but it's something I want to do because it's so camp friendly with a Dutch oven. I okay. don't know why it's not more of a thing actually. Yeah. Um, I mean, Dutch ovens are like, that's boy scouts forever. Like that's right. like, yeah absolutely important camping utensils so right 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 i don't know it's 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 weird how like chili and like mexican food became the kind of like travel staples right right and then there's all these other things that are relatively close to that orbit that people don't touch but we're hoping to spread people's knowledge a little bit with the show so it's the only that's the reason to have the show like <laughs> yeah, inspire others to try new dishes yeah that yeah never had before yeah yeah and also just to see like you can take something that you make at home that you love and want to bring it out to camp and that it's doable mm -hmm. to not be so um yeah just like nervous about it intimidated or intimidated nervous, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, i'm terrified of cooking so that's great I mean, like... <laughs> <me too. laughs> Uh, you help me get better. Do you guys have to vary anything for the dogs, or do they have like their just normal meal that they always have? We go back and forth. We used to make them food, and then um, whenever we did Baja, we were like, "Let's do kibble because it's much easier when we're traveling for months at a time." Um, so we go back and forth. Whenever we get settled at home, sometimes we start cooking for them and do mm -hmm. a mix of like cooked food and kibble. Um, it just depends. We have a Shiba Inu, and she's very picky, which is very common for Shibas. What? So, yeah. <laughs> a dog uh, known for its aloofness is also picky? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's. Uh, but then Stella will eat anything that you throw at her, so she's easy. Yeah, she's really easy. 
Park girls. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we we do cook and it's just very simple stuff. It's just like ground meat and uh, rice and some veggies for them. And that's what we <laughs> usually do. And it takes like an hour at a day to prep them for about two weeks worth of food. So it's not bad. Okay. So yeah. it's not terrible at all. Yeah. But that requires us to be home. So it depends on, <laughs> on if we're yeah. home or not. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's doable on the road. It's just the, the food storage is more of the issue than making it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because it's like, do we want to sacrifice our fridge space just to spoil them? I mean, sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> well, and I, I feel like that was uh the last time we talked was was one i don't think downside is the right term but one of the drawbacks to the troopy is the amount of interior space you guys had for cooking and yes. for what you could bring right yeah yeah uh-huh. so and it's so, slowly expanded we've added like a pelican box on uh-huh. the back to gain some space yeah, we're like yeah, trying yeah. to take up every surface that we can yeah almost. yeah um, I did have a really interesting uh, threads conversation with somebody the other day, and we were talking about uh, John Prawley's Troopy a little bit. Yeah. And then uh, someone asked uh, if we would do a rebuild, okay. and I said no because we're completely lazy to could completely do the rebuild, right? <laughs> but if I had a choice, yes, I would do. We do, would do rebuild, but we wouldn't have a built-in stove. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, scotal tabletop to the uh, back of the truck. Just like some sort of like compact stove and that, that could go in and out. So, just one stove rather than having a built in that just takes up that space specifically. Do you have so, one or two burners in the truck? We have two. Okay. So, right, it is so, quite so a bit of space. Yeah. So, here's the crazy thing <laughs> because I like cooking so much, uh, we have the interior stove, which has two. And then we also have an outside stove that has two burners, right? So, that's like redundant in the sense that like we're carrying too much shit <laughs> yes you're you're focusing on a trend of the show lately is a number of people being like we took weight like um tasia and ernesto from overland the americas huh? they were like huh? we had so much shit packed in our forerunner like they were just throwing shit i yeah. think out <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 i remember that yeah. they told us about that, that definitely happens yeah I, I we're pretty good on the the stuff yeah i'd say the most part is like we just have a stove that we don't need right now. Well, I mean, we use it, but it's just like you're needing two versus you could have had one where you like pull it out and then set it on. That's what Ernesto and Teresa have. They have one oh, that's it's, it's lovely. Yes. And it's, um, what is it? It's induction. induction. They, did, did they talk to you Ooh. about that thing? No, they didn't talk to us about it. I'm familiar with the induction ones, but they, we didn't talk about it. Okay. So they have a two burner induction and it's, 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 it's sunk into their, uh, their countertop. But at any time, they could just lift it straight out from the countertop and plug it into the outside wall plug and then have oh. their table on their door. Yeah. That's brilliant. Really. It's, it's brilliant. Like, I wish we thought of that when we were building. Yeah. Um, they have a much more robust power system than we do, though. So that's why we didn't True. even think about it. So the induction ones do draw a lot, don't they? A ton. A ton. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's not so much that we don't have the battery capacity or the energy storage. It's more of how are we going to put it back in? How do you, how are you going to recharge? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you can have it like you have, you can recharge, but you need to need a ton of solar or just drive every day. Right. Yeah. So that was right. when I spent the time with the adventure van company, there, there'd be people that'd be like, Oh, it's no big deal because they'd run their van and the batteries would charge off the alternator. Right. Cause they only had. Yeah. 200 watts of solar up top like so the solar wasn't that's nothing yeah yeah it's not gonna get yeah. it done yeah. but they also had like amp hour wise was just a massive amount of batteries in the back of those because <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. a van like you have so yeah. much room back there yeah, yeah. yeah. Running um, a lot too. yeah. yeah and but, the, on, the only yeah. times i ever traveled long distance with those things was for a media shoot so we were constantly uh-huh. driving so we never worried about energy draw yeah 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 mm-hmm. yeah but have you seen the, the all the trends from ces this year about the solar stuff I saw a rooftop tent that was popped up that had like multiple solar panels. 600 watts of solar on a rooftop <laughs> tent. <laughs> that seems ro- more robust than we're used to. So, <laughs> so I, I mean, the trend is going that way, right? It looks yeah. weird when it's popped up. Like, I'm not sure if you can pop, pop up a bit. I'm going I'm to try and find Jackery. it. It's from Jackery. Um, and it, it, it's pretty cool because it slides out. And then when you look at it, it's really ugly. But then if you just use that much power, then it makes so much sense. Oh, my gosh. It's hideous. It's hideous. No, it's, it's, it's absolutely. I mean, 
It's hideous, but it makes sense. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on, Google. You're not helping me tonight. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's that, kind of the that big thing I matters. saw from PBS, which was how much solar is now a thing, right? Because everyone's like, oh, I just need 200 watts. Like, no, you no, 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 no. Like, everyone has so much power usage these days that you need way more. That's more important than storage, power storage these days. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that was, I would always tell the people, like, when they were like, all right, do I need more? Because we would, like, offer packages to put more solar panels on the top of the van. They'd be like, do I need more? And I was uh -huh. like, solar's basically a, a trickle charger. Like, it's, yes. Yes. if you're just sitting there and the sun is out and it's bright, you're getting uh -huh. some energy. But it is not refilling the batteries, like, robustly, yes. I guess. Yeah. Man. And then and then that, that little robot thingy that they got is yeah. super cool, too. Do you know about that thing? No, I didn't. I haven't paid okay. attention to CES at all. I, I guess I have to like preface. <laughs> I have no affiliation with Jackery. I don't talk to anybody there, but I know this because I'm really interested in this stuff, right? Okay. So that little robot is AI powered, but it has a battery built in, right? And mm -hmm. because it's AI powered, it follows the sun all day long. Okay. So it just rolls around, always having sun. So because it, it knows where the sun's going. So what would the use case for that be? Okay, so so we have so in our in our friend group, yeah. we have this term that we call um, solar gardeners. Okay, right? yeah, and I am a solar gardener, right? Because in in our house of that's moves, I am the solar gardener. I am the guy that moves the panel every hour, right? So to so make sure it's in the most direct, right, right. So in Baja, we're always like it's really short sun days of sun, so we are trying to get as much sun as possible all the time, yeah. and we're just every hour we're getting up. I'm moving the panel. I'm rechanging, and then I'm checking my app to see if I'm getting enough power from that movement, right? Yeah. Or if I need to change it a little bit more, right? But that maybe, little maybe robot, a little dust, a little dust off yeah, while yeah, you're there. A little, yeah. a little <laughs> robot just does all of that for you. I'm not saying it's great, but the idea of not being able to, not just attending the solar all the time, is a great idea. That thing's actually really big. Is it really big? That was just, that was my next question. Is like because there's nothing in the image to like compare it to. So that thing is probably about as big as three quarters of a big sedan's trunk. Oh, okay. It's pretty big, right? And it so also like has a almost battery. almost a golf cart or almost like a, no, no, a no, go kart, no, no, no. like a kid's go kart. Kids, whatever that 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 big Fisher Price thing that kids go in the red and the, the big tall yellow roof thing. Yeah. Just the red part. That's okay, about just that. the red part. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's, just the red part. That's called the cozy coop. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have kids, so I don't know. I forgot. Dude, homie, dogs. there was no judgment in my comment. <laughs> so, so you have dogs, I, I understand. I like the idea of that thing because I don't have to tend to the solar. Yeah. Um, but it, it needs a couple of years of iterations of that. And it has a just... battery built in, so you don't have to worry about anything, which is so, nice. So if we were to purchase this now... It yes. would it would harvest the sunlight by moving around, and then mm -hmm. when it's ready, you would plug that into the troopy to then transfer the energy to the troopy. You could have it directly uh, to your battery thing, and then trickle straight to you the could, battery. You could just have it chart plugging just, in you already, could have it, like straight up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Or you just yeah, have I'm... like you just follow it around and charge your phone with it too, <laughs> <laughs> because of the battery. In it. Then, then we're now eliminating the solar gardening <laughs> yeah, yeah, ability yeah, of yeah. you to chill yeah, because yeah. you follow it around on a leash <laughs> to charge your phone. <laughs> Dude, that was... I like the ideas coming out, by the way. I like the use that, that, that people are saying we need more solar. Hang yeah. Not so much power capacity or power storage. I like that. I like that. Well, Anyways. all of the different iterations, because we're, we're past the tipping point of alternative energy at this point. Like all of the oh, technologies totally. are now cheap enough that like we're going to see more and more iterations mm -hmm. along those lines. Like my brother-in-law sent me one the other day that was like a, it looked like an upside down kite with all the propellers up. And yep. it was the wing itself was to tie off to a boat. And then the, mm -hmm. the wing would carry it up on the wind. And then the wind would be turning all the little propellers. Oh, that's that would, wonderful be behind the boat or follow around my brother-in-law likes to give me crap because i live in kansas where all the wind turbines are and so mm -hmm. for him they kill all the birds right like that's yeah, yeah. Not, that's not real but <laughs> he likes to give me a hard time with that and he was like this is how i'm going to keep the birds away from my boat and i was like you're hilarious <laughs> <laughs> but it's just a different idea on the same concept right it's just a different right. iteration as technology gets faster semiconductors get better Eventually, we get to solid state batteries. Who knows? Maybe potentially at least Toyota. Toyota. That's a ways off still, but right. yeah. But I just yeah. need Toyota to hurry up and make them work. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, speaking about trucks, though, 
the new thing about the trucks is that that Ram 1500, that 2024.5 thingy. Oh, yeah. That, the that uh, truck, the v, V6 generator. The Ram Charger, I believe. That thing is freaking cool. And I want more companies to have a truck like that because but, I would buy it. Because, so if I remember correctly, this is the one, it's similar to what the old school, what's more of a concept of what the original Chevy Volt was, where there wasn't, there's no actual connection from the motor that exists in this, I'm sorry, the engine that exists in this uh -huh. thing to the electric drivetrain. Yes. The engine in it is purely there to generate mm -hmm. electricity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so people that aren't in the know that are seeing this on the image screen now, I think they said it's like 700 uh, miles of range. Yeah. Which is incredible. So that's like more than, I, that's more than the Suburban gets downhill with the tail. Right. 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 And then with towing <laughs> and then especially with overlanding, like people just put weight on things. Um, the electric motors would be beautiful on that. Right. The instant torque. The instant torque. Yeah. I don't want so, to buy a Ram. So I'm going <laughs> to wait for more companies to, buy, to do that again. Right. <laughs> I think it'll be really interesting to see if anyone else hops on this bandwagon because uh -huh. I feel uh -huh. like this is the band aid. It is. It is. It, it's it's the gateway drug. Yeah. <laughs> right. So everyone thought F one fifty was gonna F one fifty Lightning was gonna be a gateway, but that's right. too electric. It's too right. electric. Right. Yeah. Too electric. Right. So this is this is this is the right in between, and it's also like you know like. For people that are like, oh, you can't go out in the middle of nowhere with the electric car, but now you can. Yeah, so, exactly. This yeah. is this is actually built for truck country because none of us live <laughs> near a giant network of chargers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. So actually, one thing that uh, update about us is we just recently got an EV. Did you really? Yeah, yeah. Chris, I mean, you didn't post that on Instagram. How was I supposed to know? <laughs> <laughs> we, have it, we, have it. we got a honda ionic or hyundai ionic yeah uh five yep. and we love it it's been amazing we were unsure if we'd want to go full electric but really it's just for like an around town car it does great on any travel that we know we'll be passing charging stations so like we could it came with uh 30 minutes of free charging every day so for two years for two years for, what <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was, it was like a buy incentive yeah okay yeah yeah. And like we've looked up the coast, we could go all the way to like Oregon, Washington, no issues with that car and it'd be basically free if we if we took it slow, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm, then even mm -hmm. paying for charging mm -hmm. is so so low. It's is awesome. It's similar really fun. style to what you guys got? Yes, that's yeah. what we have. Yeah, perfect. Basically. So we get about two hundred real world miles, right okay. right around um like in ninety percent charge. Uh, and that's have, plenty for getting around town. Have you and run into any issues with like charging infrastructure, like chargers charging not being functioning? The issue was during Thanksgiving. Um, we were driving okay. to the Bay Area, and um, we we're coming. Actually, we we're coming back from the Bay Area, going back to Southern California, and there's this one charging station along the route that we stopped on the way up, right? And it was great. It was like, uh, if, if anyone's into e, uh, no or like knows EV things, it was a, it was a three fifty kilowatt charger. Which, which is a big a, one. Which is a big, fast, like we could get 100% in half an hour, pretty much. Right? So we were like, we're going to go there. There's 10 different chargers at this one because it's a, it's a big, big charger. Um, and the problem with driving back was that we were driving back the day before. So I think we drove back Sunday? I forgot. Anyways, it was the day before everyone, everyone else was going to drive back. Okay. Right? So we were trying to avoid that, what, uh, that, that the Thanksgiving rush. traffic. The rush, right? But we got there middle of the night, and two things, right? So it was cold. It was below forty, right? So that's I have to bring that up in a little bit. <laughs> okay. Below forty, right? Um, and there was also a giant line in front of this charger charging station. So just because it was so, so late, kind of below thing. Forty. I think because there's so many people. Okay. Well, we, we caught LA traffic coming up. No, we were, I'm talking on the way down. Oh, on the way down. I'm on the way back down. Um, so I, I think I think so. One problem with this is that the re reason why we waited, we waited two hours by the way to charge. Which what? Is, yeah, this, this is like rare in the world of EVs because it's it's not like this. Super rare in the world. It's but more of like a holiday rush. It's a holiday rush thing, and okay. also all these companies, not just Hyundai, is giving the the free charging incentive. Okay. So like. 
uh, Mercedes is doing it. Um, I think Kia, Kia, Kia. Uh, Hyundai, uh, I forgot Ford is doing it as well. So all the these people are like, I want the free charging. So I'm going to go to this, th this brand of station. Got it. So that really added up to it. And then I bring up the 40 degrees thing because we didn't realize that once it hits around that mark, the batteries just don't like it. Okay. Right. Yeah. This, this is something we learned. Yeah, we didn't this, know. This is something my buddy battery. just asked me about the other day. And I was like, I'm pretty yeah. sure they start to work less efficiently as it gets colder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so apparently we have a, an option where we can turn the battery heaters on, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Is it some of, somewhat automatic? But I think whenever it's like really cold, you have to like turn it on. Yes. Yes. Okay. So the, it's, it's weird because you have to precondition, quote unquote, precondition the, the batteries before you charge. Okay. Right. We didn't know this going into it because we're we're new EV owners, right? right? Right. And so we went. We finally, after two hours, we charged, right? But we only got 140 miles of range, and we're like, "This oh, is no. really weird." But because we didn't precondition. Okay. Right. So if you if had we conditioned, we'd have gotten our our full range. So this is the fun math problem of like the depending on how much range you had left as you were approaching the stations is depending on uh -huh. how much energy you have in the car to then hopefully have enough energy to precondition the batteries to then yeah, up yeah, enough yeah. range like, to continue oh. on. The... Yeah. yeah. So this is like the, the one thing about EVs, which I don't like is the mathing. The, the mathing. <laughs> <laughs> like everything else about EVs has been amazing. We absolutely loved every single. Oh, yeah. It's so fun at a stoplight too. Yeah. You put it in sport mode and just. Just Dang launch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we really. Your cheeks. You just feel your cheeks being cold. You're like, oh God. <laughs> It's like a roller coaster. Yeah. I mean, we, we really enjoy it. Uh, and like I said, I, it, once some other, someone else comes out an EV truck with a, with an engine up front for a generator, I'm in. It, it strikes me that you guys are at two ends of the spectrum for like ride, not comfort, but maybe like uh -huh. ride serenity. Like I'm sure the Hyundai is super quiet. Super it's quiet. you guys and the dogs, right? Like that's yeah, yeah, the yeah. only yeah. thing making noise. And then yeah, when yeah. you're in the troopy, it's an yeah. overland vehicle. It's going to rattle. Yeah, yeah, Things yeah. are moving. So yeah. like you're yeah. the oh, noisiest yeah. end of vehicle travel to the quietest end. And also the yeah. dirtiest end of vehicles. Why dirty? With the, the troopy? The troopy. The troopy. This blazing out black smoke. Oh. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> so we're car enthusiasts. What can we say? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. yeah. Uh, it's like, wait a minute. You guys... I saw an RX-7, too. Is that not a rounder? Is that... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's mine. That was my first car whenever I was uh, 16. I'm and sorry, it blew what? up on Yeah, yeah. That's what I, I drove to school and everything. And, oh, my gosh. Um, rotaries are really known to just, like, kind of give out. At least a turbo rotary is known to give out at, like, 70K miles. And I think I had it for maybe a year. And then the engine just, like water seal broke whole thing had to be rebuilt that's oh, what got me into cars is i had to completely rebuild it myself because i didn't have the money to pay somebody to do it um so, I, so i've like, seen those videos i've watched those videos of guys rebuilding rotary engines until like yeah, the, is yeah. it the is it the arch seal or what is that the, the um, apex seal the apex seal thank you like yeah, just yeah how fine all these little different things you have. I was like can we just get yeah. some cylinders i, I understand cylinders rotaries <laughs> Turbos and yeah. rotaries, that, and, and then combining those, that's dark magic. I don't know what that, yeah, any of that yeah. is. <laughs> it's, it's so fun. I had a friend build the internals, but I pulled the block out for him. I was like, I'm, I'm not going to mess with all this internal stuff. Yeah, yeah, I don't know yeah. what I'm doing. Um, but it's it's such a fun car. So she she's, she doesn't like boasting about it, but she rebuilt it. For, so it comes factory with the two turbos. She right. made it to a single turbo. And it's 500 on E85 and 450 on pump gas. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. It's fast. Yeah. It's so if you had to race car. that against the Hyundai, who would win? Hyundai, oh would, Hyundai would destroy it. <laughs> would the instant it. torque. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 But that one's way more fun. I don't know about the long, the, the like long, I, I don't know what would be faster. I, I guess it depends on how long the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the straight would be. The RX-7 is definitely built for like quarter mile track. I used to take it to the track a lot whenever I was younger. And then oh, now no. I'm in California. I'm like, dang, I shouldn't have single turbo it. I could have kept it like twin turbo. It would have been perfect for the mountains. But um, mountain driving is like a whole other thing. Yeah. We don't have mountains in Texas. So, <laughs> you know, like, I wasn't going to be building it out for that. Nope. Yeah. Ooh, I have a, I have a joke for you about the RX-7 on okay. which would win the race. So you, you were talking about how quarter mile the RX-7 would win. Oh, I don't know about a quarter. I mean, I just feel like a long straight, maybe the FD would actually yeah, probably 
probably be the ionic the i don't know though yeah I yeah know. the ionic tops out pretty quick yeah like on like you hit like a certain max torque and then there's just right. no more give after a while and so yeah initially because it's all wood drive and because of the, the instant torque it yeah. will take off the line but i just don't know how how long it would hold yeah and then see the i was driver like driver reaction too yeah. is much slower yeah yeah. My, my joke is after about 150 miles about the RX-7 wins. <laughs> I don't know. It might blow up. 150 miles at 38 degrees. I mean, we, we yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I don't know. RX-7 that, can get real hot and blow up, so. Yeah, that's true. See, that's why I was like at 38 degrees. I feel like it'll help keep your engine cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, well, driving today, I never saw the temperature sensor even get close to normal operating temperature. It was way, it was up, but it was way down there near the right, bottom right. end. It, that's how cold oh it's been. <laughs> but that's the best part about EVs is talking about like the horsepower and torque numbers, like yeah. the the campaign to save the world. Yes, that, that I, I want all of that too. But like, sell it to truck country with horsepower, yeah. right? Like the Rivian seven hundred horsepower or whatever. Like, uh -huh. yeah. That's real yeah. out here. <laughs> I, I, I think kind of like the, the 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 deciding factor for a lot of people about EVs is not so much like like the thought of like oh we're gonna save the world with this thing. It's just literally it just drives so much better objectively. Like yeah. if, if you don't care about cars at all, then you should drive an EV because it one it just drives so much better and you will drive better and it's like it's just overall great. Like it's quieter, it's smoother, like. Everything that an automatic gearbox and every, everything you want in a Toyota Camry is better in an EV. In an EV with less yeah. moving parts overall. With less moving parts, yeah. yeah. No oil changes. No, no oil yeah. changes. Oh my had, gosh, we haven't been to a gas station in what, like a month? a month. Yeah, yeah. The only time we snacks? go to gas stations is if we go fill up in the Troopy. Yeah. You say yeah. you don't get to buy snacks anymore. Like there's no. <laughs> okay, we're stopped at home. <laughs> yeah. Which that was, there was a guy who bought like a secondhand Tesla. And that was one of the Instagram reels I got served the other day. It was him being like, listen, I'm here. I'm charging my car. There's nothing around. Where do I go to the bathroom? Where do uh -huh. I get drinks at? Where do right, I get right, snacks right. at? I was like, you need to plan your trip better. He's going to yeah. have to do more math. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so the great thing about the middle of the night uh coming back from thanksgiving charge was that it was right in front of a 24-hour mexican joint it was oh. beautiful it was beautiful yeah, yeah. it was glorious Just go get margaritas <laughs> let's get some queso <laughs> <laughs> we've got time to sober up at that yeah. point like <laughs> i think one of the the highest point one of the best points about ev culture right now is that they are putting chargers in cool places right okay. so we here at home one of our favorite charging stations is one it's really fast it's a 350 but it's right inside of a target parking lot right and then oh perfect yeah yeah right so you still get your snacks you still go pee and you go down down the aisle a couple of aisles yeah and it's perfect things. right right except you're buying extra things like you're, <laughs> you're spending more money the money you're saving gas. on the electricity <laughs> <laughs> that's true you're not spending on the gas you're and you're spending... getting free electricity wow. so no more gas money, target money. I've never thought about it like that. This is dangerous. Sorry? So uh, our, our uh, Hyundai app tells us how much we've saved. And because we don't pay for electricity when we charge, and we don't charge at home, because why okay. would we do that? Because we'd be paying for it, right? But it's it, so far, we've owned it for almost a year, and we've saved 1200 bucks in gas. Okay, that. That's a real number. Like that's, that's a real number, right? And then we that's kind of days did, on the road in the troopy at this point. Right. Like we kind, of, yeah. we kind of did the math. Um, if we had our like the troopy or something like that, and if we drove the amount of time that we drove it, and then filled it up the amount of times we filled it, we we would have been anywhere between twenty eight hundred to thirty two hundred dollars in gas. Oh, easy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So you did. You're close to four. You're saving close to four grand then, because you're not spending yeah. that, and you're saving right. the twelve hundred based on using their free electricity. So right, 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 yeah. right. So you're I you're, mean, you're effectively making trip money. Like it's literally <laughs> real money. No, totally, totally. Uh, I mean, we are paying the, the only th the sucky things. We are paying a like a, a, not not lease, but we're paying a payment for it. Right yeah, now. you have a car payment. The only yeah. thing. Yeah. But even then, that's still cheaper than gas. Mm -hmm. So away. I I have I have done this math before because I've always had giant uh -huh. SUVs because I've always had way too many kids. Uh -huh. And 
the amount of times I've gone from, all right, cool, we could transfer down to something smaller that gets better fuel economy, but the savings is not there when you add in the payment for it. But with an EV and free mm -hmm. electricity, mm -hmm. all of a sudden that math is different. Like right, that right. makes more right. sense. Right, right. The problem is I'm limited to only one EV that can fit six people right now, <laughs> oh, which is right. the $90,000 Rivian R1S. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but you also live in a very cold area. So I just- Yes, well, right now, yeah. Well, right, yeah. right. So you wouldn't be able to drive the EV at all, if anything. Yeah. See, and that's that's yeah. good advice because my friend right now, she's a realtor, and she's she was comparing going from oh. her Grand yeah. Cherokee yeah. to one uh -huh. of the four by E Grand Cherokees, which is just that little turbo four uh -huh. cylinder, and then the battery pack, uh, or just the full straight EV. And I was like, I don't think the straight EV is where you want to be. Um, no, not in the cold. I I, no. I would say that's not, it's not ready yet. Well, and that was that like technology. Rivian had that fun, well, I shouldn't say a fun video, but they were, they had a video recently of like, they were in winter park and they were like showing all of their people who could uh -huh. set the climate ahead of time. So they know they're going to be in the car at eight mm -hmm. at seven forty five. it can warm it up. And I was like, mm -hmm. so how much range did you just lose? That's exactly <laughs> where my mind went. I was like, cause that's the finite amount in the vehicle, right? Like if right, it's still right. on the charger, cool. Like no big deal, but yeah, like, right. It's got to be everybody minimal. else is losing range. Yes, because we we sat for our charger. I think we we got to the charger coming back from Thanksgiving. We had five miles. We sat with the car on. It was cold as heck outside, mm -hmm. and we sat in the car for at least two hours, mm -hmm. and it didn't take a single mile. One yeah. mile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One mile. So I did. So you I, went from I, five to four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, I did check the app after like the Hyundai app, and it kind of shows me where the power goes. Okay. And climate and all that stuff is so minuscule in terms really? of Yeah, cuz you have this giant freaking freaking battery, right? And then yeah. to run a heater doesn't take much compared to the whole scheme of things. Okay. I, I think it was like when I that trip specifically, I think it was like 3% of the battery that it took for climate. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It just feels like it's been marketed as more to me or maybe that's bad marketing i don't know but like yeah yeah but then because it's ev you have to do stupid math things right oh it was like okay so then it was under 40 <laughs> and so what actually did i lose so right well, there is some leeway here and there but for the most part i think climate is so little on the power of scale things have you had a lot of range anxiety no None. No, we haven't had other than maybe that Thanksgiving one. That, that Thanksgiving was, that, was that was scary. It. Yeah, yeah. But okay. that was the only time. Yeah, but I'd say that's that was yeah. very like on the way up, it was beautiful because okay. no traffic. Um, and then we left Los Angeles and we made three quarters of the way of the whole trip, which is five hundred miles. Yeah. Three quarters of the way on one charge, right? Or roughly one charge. Right? It was like that's three, impressive. Right. And then, then we charged at that charging station. It was like above sixty degrees. It was perfect. For every everything was, EV wise, right? We charged yeah. at that same charging station that we came back to, but we left my parents' house and we had five miles left just to that charging station. Yeah, because so of the cold. because of the cold, it's crazy. Got it. Right. So that's like the variables that you play with, but but it probably would have been a lot different if we had the battery heater on and we had no yes that. yes. I'd, we need to do it again and and yeah yeah back yeah. I, science right now EVs is a little bit too much. <laughs> thought for a lot of people i think yeah. maybe in five to seven years it'll be immature and you don't need to think about these things yeah and i, I would say I for think... your regular commuter it's not a lot no, of no, thinking no. Yeah, like we yeah. charge up once a week and we hardly ever have to think about it really yeah and i think that'll be when we actually see them take off is when the infrastructure reaches a point where no one has to think about them anymore and that's right right, right. Mercedes is now starting 800 kilowatt hour charging stations. So that's so that's big. Like 10 minutes for, for a battery charge for a car. So, well, and then the crazy part will be is if we actually get to solid state batteries, which are supposed to charge even more efficiently, mm -hmm. faster, right? Like, mm -hmm. and hold more to be full yeah. in three minutes. Like, all of yeah. a sudden, like, that's crazy. an actual fuel stop. Like, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Five to 10 minutes, right? Time, yeah. Yeah. Trooper takes a long time. There's two tanks and takes about, five minutes of tank so it's a 10 minute stop just for fuel yeah so that's the way i feel gonna... about the suburban too it's a 32 gallon tank i'm like well we're gonna be here for a minute so i guess i'll sit back in the car and play on my phone yeah 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 <laughs> yeah so i do hope that the electric thing with the generator thing does take off on other companies i really do hope i i think that's disruptive enough that other companies will take notice 
I absolutely hope so too. Cause that's, yeah. I, I, I feel like the Chevy Volt was the perfect transition vehicle. It was just like 10 years too soon. Yep. Like yeah. We weren't yep. ready to fully go that way, but yep. as long as you have that thing plugged in, like you rarely were kicking the engine, the motor on right, to right. generate anything. Right. Right. So, and also trying to find a used Volt, like, they were so yeah. expensive. Like I, yeah. I looked. <laughs> I had no idea. Whoa. Yeah, they were yeah. like seventeen, eighteen grand, ten-year-old vehicles. You're like, what is happening here? Like, I can go get a Forerunner for that kind of money. Yeah. We would buy a Tundra <laughs> tomorrow if it had that that drivetrain. Right. And that's yeah. Yeah. So you're talking to the guy who owns an LX470, a Toyota Sequoia, oh, again. Yeah, a little yeah, bit. You're back. You're, okay. you're back now. Yeah. I'll just dance around a little bit so that way you know it's me for real. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my favorite part is we're both still on YouTube. Before, like, you guys just, like, went away on YouTube, and I was like, okay, okay something's wrong. I got <laughs> You went away for um, us. So, anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Boo. Yeah. Stupid technology. So, like, Boo. imagine new GX uh, or, or, the, so, or, like, Land Cruiser 250. Yeah. Right? Tundra. Um, Tacoma. Like, all across the board, I think it would do really well. And I think you picked the correct model they'll start with because it's the one that has the most size to it is the Tundra. I just feel like the tech isn't quite small yeah. enough yet, hence yeah. Ram going in those yeah. 1,500 yeah. trucks. And that mm -hmm. truck even looks longer than it should be. Like it has a right. long bed right. on a regular cab, right? Right. So right. I think Tundra will be, if we see it, that's where we'll see it. I hope so. I just, Toyota's so cautious on this stuff. They are so... <laughs> just a... The Japanese brand thing, they're they're very, very conservative of any move. Yeah. yeah. They don't they're not uh was it the Silicon Valley of the like go fast break things? That's not Toyota. <laughs> like go slow so nothing breaks. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They're playing the long game. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. It's yeah. absolutely the most Toyota thing ever. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. But then but then we have Hyundai and Kia and all that. They're doing very disruptive things, but that's very burn hot and then hopefully people will stick around for the brand later. That, that's Which what is, caught us, right? So yeah. that's the Korean market there. Like that's <laughs> that's how we got Samsung phones that were exploding for a while, and now they have great batteries. <laughs> right. Yep. 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 And now we have great uh, Korean cars. Yeah. Like really, really it, good. It yeah. is hilarious to see how those two brands have gone from just being almost disposable uh -huh. to people are like, "Have you seen these things?" Like, yeah. tell your eyes yeah. are everywhere. I can't. Really? It's the it's the most suburban mom car around here right now. I mean, like, mm -hmm. we still have our Tahos and our Yukons and all that stuff. And there's a lot uh -huh. of Highlanders. But there are a ton of Tellurites here. Not as many Palisades. Uh-huh. Um, and then I've started to see more and more of the Genesis SUVs. Oh. I, I live that. in a weird place because I am in, like, trunk country, middle of the country. But, like, there's a super wealthy community just next door. And so, like, it's, That's like, so one of the top five richest counties. don't see that often. Well, because you guys are LA based, aren't you? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're in Range Rovers with giant payments, anyway. Uh, you're, 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 it's true. It's true. It's like G wagon Land Rover ter territory. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. If I see a G wagon, I'm like, oh, there's the one. Like, <laughs> G wagons left and right here. G wagons yeah. left and right for sure. Yeah. I did. I did get stuck behind a Range Rover Velar the other day, and I was like, "Ooh, you are very fancy! Like it's the shaved door handles and all that stuff." Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> Even though I know all the EVs do that for efficiency, but <laughs> it's like I want yeah. my handle I can pull on. Yeah. Well, sweet. Do you guys have any upcoming travel plans as we're headed towards warmer, warm-ish? Um, <laughs> we're about to get really warm. We are headed to Vietnam in March. Holy crap! Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're really excited. We haven't done like other than we did Patagonia, but I feel like we haven't done an international trip for just for ourselves in a while. So it'll be yeah. Really we're nice. we don't have how long we're going yet, but maybe a month. We'll see. Okay. Um, yeah. and then we'll see how our timing is, and then by the time we're done with Vietnam, it'll be cherry blossom season in Japan. So we might hop mm. over there. As well. we'll see. We'll see. Dude, I can, my uh, nine year old the other day was like, Dad, can we go to Tokyo? And I was like, Yes. We yes. can absolutely do that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> child dream. Gosh, when right? we were in Japan the first time, I just, my inner child was just like, Sega store, like Hello Kitty stuff. I was just like, wanted everything yeah, with faces yeah. on it. Yeah. It was like, somebody I think referred to Tokyo as like, if Casio had taken over the world, is that, uh -huh. that's what Tokyo is. <laughs> like, it's yeah, not. Tokyo is great. Yeah. Yeah. It's such a futuristic city. It's such a futuristic right? country, actually. Yeah. Well, and I'm, yeah. I'm a little nervous of going because I'm not sh 
normal sized. I'm a, I'm about six four, so I uh -huh. I'm a little oh, concerned stare about. At you. Yeah, exactly. It's just being the <laughs> be white bearded guy who's just a head above everybody. <laughs> yeah. Well, luckily Google is so efficient there. Like, if you need to get to a bus stop, you're you're like pretty. It's it's pretty straightforward because a lot of people don't speak English. It's hard to get around if you mm -hmm. don't speak Japanese. So mm -hmm. luckily we have technology now because I cannot yeah, imagine just straight doing Google it Translate. Right How do I get yeah. to the bus stop? Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, that's kind of it. Uh, we're we're trying to decide if we have time with to go to Baja this year. We would like to, but we yeah. don't know. Um, and then I think Expo West is on horizon. So okay. there's a trip coming up there and everything else surrounding that. Um, and yeah, so nothing too concrete other than going to Asia. Yeah. So you feel kind of full because Expo West is like, that's like <laughs> right around Memorial or mid May, right? Like yeah, you're going to yeah, go spend yeah, a month yeah. in Vietnam, maybe visit Japan on the way and squeeze in Baja. <laughs> Are you guys time you lords? Baja. Like, is that <laughs> <laughs> the troopies? Mm. Also, a TARDIS is what I heard there. That's what I, yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. That's true. <laughs> um, yeah, we're excited about that. And then, uh, yeah, there will be strips. We just don't know, like, yeah. like in the States. Yeah. Yeah. Well, by the time you get to the summer, you're going to have to shoot season two of the cooking show. So then, <laughs> I really hope so. Yeah. I hope people tune in and like it because it would be incredible to, we're, yep. we're so excited if we could it would do a love two. a season two but we'll see yeah. how it, it, people like it and go from there and episodes for that will be on is that the x overland channel or will it be yeah. so our series specifically so they have this whole creator creator series that they have but our sp series specifically will be on the x overland Cre creator network or network behind okay. paywall but also mobile one is um sponsoring the show as well and it's going to be on their youtube channel oh nice uh, so it'll be the only, maybe, I, th I think so. I think it, the whole series will be on their YouTube channel. So the mobile one YouTube channel. Yeah. Yep, yep. And then a series finale will be on the X Overland uh, network to tune in for That's that. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 I love this stuff. This stuff is fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't wait for you to well, see it. I, I want to see it. <laughs> Between, we had Richard and Astley recently too. And so like, I feel like I've now talked to everybody in the, in the creator series. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's good stuff. Yeah. Well, sweet. I will wrap up the show real quick if you guys are okay with that. Yeah. Well, that um, great chat. I love chatting with you guys. Um, yeah. You can rate and review the show wherever you listen to podcasts. You can like and subscribe on YouTube. We were live on YouTube twice tonight. <laughs> so we've started two different recordings now. Um, and I lost my place. And it's just at Gone Dirt and Everywhere, correct? Yep. Yep. Have you, yep. Have you started the separate um, social channel? A couple channel? Of things is we do have a Gone Dirt, a, a Gone Cook in Instagram now. And a say. Gone Cook in TikTok. And oh, YouTube. gosh. So that's all coming. Yeah. It's all coming. All okay. Coming. All coming. Yeah. Yeah. It turns out I started up a uh, TikTok for the podcast and I literally only post like there's a uh, web based version to post. Uh -huh. And so I didn't have to actually put TikTok on my phone or do anything. Uh -huh. Like I can just like yeah. throw them in through the web browser. And I was like, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the way I want to consume. <laughs> <laughs> TikTok's I don't want to get great. yelled don't, at. Don't fall yeah. into the, the whole no. TikTok. It, it, it's actually really entertaining if you. I did it for a little bit and then I was like, I can't, I can't do this anymore i, need to, yeah, I have too yeah. much stuff going TikTok. on tiktok's like my only form of consumption right now yeah i know yeah, yeah. It's, it's you know um like it back in the the 90s as a kid you press the 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 channel you go you yeah sir that's the same thing with tiktok anyways yeah, exactly that's it we're getting it's like we're, I, we're... I went too fast can i go back yeah i can still go back i didn't reset the feed yeah. i'm okay yeah, Once yeah. you reset your feed though you're doomed forever you can never go yeah. back no. <laughs> well sweet well, thanks guys Thank you for having us. Yeah, it was really fun chatting. Mm -hmm.